It's your body and what you do with it is up to you. I just don't see the logic in working so hard to get in such great shape to become so meta metabolically optimally healthy and then to throw it away because of social pressures or social fears of missing out. Good morning, everybody. It is Dr. Perlman coming to you from Richardson, Texas at Paramount Chiropractic and Wellness. Hopefully this audio comes in as good as or better than all my other audio. And uh, one of the things that we really need to just get right into today is the holidays. The holidays are coming up. Thanksgiving, uh, historically, the reason I even reference this is many people will talk about beginning the holiday season and, you know, what, how are they going to eat and, you know, getting stuffed on the holidays and sort of tradition around the holidays. And that drives me right into my first point when it comes to does familial history or genetics play a role in fat loss? Does genetics play a role in metabolism? And the answer is, of course it does, but it is nuanced. And you might have heard the term epigenetics and you might have heard the term or the phrase, genetics loads the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. And I truly believe this because even if you have a predisposition for something, Unless the gene is turned on, you know, early on in life and you express that thing and have a clear medical diagnosis, uh, a diagnosis, excuse me, that has been given, you know, definitive, then in actuality, more than likely the other environment, excuse me, the other familial or genetic factors are happening in your environment, meaning you're continuing to behave the same way, you live in the same place, you drink the same drinks, you eat the same food, you practice the same other behaviors and possibly then begin to look like or have the same physical ailments as your family. I, for one, am somebody who has um, escaped that from what I believe to be the baseline of many of the people in my family, but that drives right into Thanksgiving and that drives right into behaviors during the holidays. I wanna make it very clear. I am not telling you not to have a sliver of cake, my new favorite word, sliver of cake. I am not telling you to have um, you know, two bites of turkey and put the plate down. What I am suggesting for everybody strongly is to understand the consequences of bad eating. And again, for the people on this channel who watch this content or for my clients or patients or my wife's clients or patients, what you have to understand is you have decided to take on a life of clean eating and exercise and optimizing protein and optimizing, not just exercise, but excuse me, but choosing, you're choosing to do something like trisepatide, retitrutide, tesamorelin, some kind of growth hormone, uh, peptide. Maybe you're simply on a GLP-1 and nothing else. Maybe you're using MOTC at your own, um, by your, at your own discretion. Maybe you're using SS-31 and you're seeing how fat loss can be affected uh, by using some of these um, you know, glow stack, glow stack, all these other types of peptides that exist. When in actuality, I think that people aren't really accepting just what it is some of these peptides do. So let's talk about my favorite, the one that I currently use, my wife also currently uses, clients that we work with and coach have chosen to use and we simply guide them. And that is that retitrutide is probably the most powerful, best understood GLP-1 triple agonist with added GIP and glucagon activating, if you will, receptor hormones, um, analog hormone activation or activity. And the reason I'm saying it like that is when you can control every time you eat food, how your body responds via sort of greater than 100% efficacy <laughs> or efficiency, excuse me, of a hormone, given the peptides action, and you can guarantee that your insulin and your glucose or your glucagon from the liver is going to meet a certain threshold and act a certain way to help you metabolize your food or kick on uh, beta oxidation, aka fatty oxidation, aka breaking down of triglycerides and burning fat, then that's a real enhancement. You can't do this on your own while craving sugar all the time or not having sort of a GLP-1 hunger satiating effect. That's what the GLP-1 does. That's the classic peptide, the Ozempic, the Wegovy, the things we know about before things like Zetbound or dual agonists came along to then have the insulin-like peptide effect. 
And that doesn't mean insulin in terms of growth. This is an insulin, you know, regulating, pancreas releasing style peptide. Um, again, hormone analog that was acting in such a way to really control the way that the blood glucose would uh, spike or become more steady state after eating. Now, what are some of the things that retitrutide really does that the reason I'm saying this isn't to promote retitrutide, it's to let you know how you need to be eating while on retitrutide. Sort of the title of, of this video is the perfect retitrutide diet. So let me quickly look at my notes. Okay, here we go. Activates hormone sensitive lipase. I recently said in a video something about lipoprotein lipase. And I was talking about the sort of upregulated hormone that traps insulin in fat cells. Hormone sensitive lipase does the opposite. It enhances beta oxidation. It increases mitochondrial, mitochondrial uncoupling. It burns more heat. It actually enhances things like ketogenesis, AKA making ketones, driving fat oxidation, driving fat for fuel and actually losing fat. Now, here's the thing. When you have too much insulin in your body, it becomes next to impossible to burn fat. I repeat, too much insulin via blood sugar, blood glucose from any type of carbohydrate. Some type of carbohydrates more than others. Raspberries and blueberries don't have quite as big as an insulogenic effect as, or a glucose spiking effect as apples or bananas. This is just a scientific fact. This is very well studied. When it's in the bloodstream, I will say things like, you can't burn fat in the presence of insulin. That is 90% true because studies have confirmed 50 to 90% inability to kick on and keep on things like fat oxidation or fat uh, burning metabolism in the presence of insulin. In other words, insulin really is that damaging when it comes to your progress and blunting your progress when it comes to burning fat when favoring glucose uh, metabolism. The whole idea is you can't get lean, you can't start burning fat, you can't really um, reduce the fat on your body, midsection, legs, wherever it is you're targeting until you have your diet dialed in, that is a fact, and things like retitrutide enhance it. When you have excess fat and you're trying to get to a percentage of body fat that makes you happy, in the presence of too many carbohydrates and too much insulin, you're not getting what we call a thermogenic effect you're not getting the benefits that muscle does for you. Your body, by holding on to actual lean mass and having muscle on your body, is going to burn more fat at rest than just trying to do more cardio and continue to lose weight on the scale or, in your mind, get leaner, get thinner. You have to understand the mechanisms by which building muscle, AKA protein synthesis, protein synthesis, there's a reason they call it that because it comes from protein, eating protein, you know, eating animal meat, eating fish, eating not vegetarian sources, unfortunately, although you could, to build, you know, big lean mass is going to be the key. Getting the extra protein and using things like possibly growth hormone analogs for repair at rest and rebuilding uh, musculoskeletal tissues is going to be a big benefit to you. I was gonna throw in a part of, on this podcast, I was gonna throw in, I think there's a lot of benefit to using things like um, uh, CJC1295 and Ipamorelin, which I like better now than Tessamorelin personally because I think clients that are on it are realizing they have that slow, steady state, longer half-life than sort of the big spike of a Tessamorelin that even though evidence has shown because it's been studied, even though it acts the same as CJC1295 and ipamorelin to an extent. I know that, that the ipamorelin is coming in on a different receptor altogether, but uh, hormones, uh, growth hormone secreting hormone, CJC1295, just like tesamorelin, do act in the exact same way, minus a minor tweak, although I don't think that minor tweak in terms of the synthetic, um, uh, how should we call it, um, construction of the peptide is the thing that's targeting belly fat. I think there's the stronger pulse at rest that allows to kick on lipolysis because again, growth hormone without the presence, of, not in the presence of, of insulin, meaning too much insulin in the blood, or even then what would be an already really high IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one, which is going to happen the more you consistently use, especially higher doses of hormone secreting hormone peptides, uh, then we'll have sort of a opposite effect of what you're going for when you're trying to burn fat, lose weight, be lean, you'll actually start to grow. 
And for the most part, again, I've just I've addressed this in, in previous podcasts. Most of us want to be lean, have lean muscle, and certainly want to just repair or sleep better or function better muscles that or tendons that could be damaged. And again, muscle or tendon that could be damaged. You might be thinking BPC one five seven, TB five hundred, and you'd be correct to think that. But certainly, there's a big part of what growth hormone secreting hormones will or the effect that they have when it comes to increasing IGF one and tissue uh, and muscle repair. But when it comes to muscle and protein th synthesis, you are going to 100% of the time uh, be talking about diet and nutrition needs rather than looking for the next peptide to do something for you when in actuality what you need to do is dial in your diet, get the protein, let the protein be metabolically protective, let the protein be thermogenic, let the protein continue to target more fat at rest and keep you um, satiated longer via the mechanisms by which the GLP-1 and GIP receptors work ideally through protein, low carbohydrate, fat burning, ketogenic state. And again, this doesn't mean you're eating bacon and lard, keto, you know, uh, fish oil all the time. It simply means that you're in, you know, that fatty, fatty acid, beta oxidation, keto ketogenic, fat burning state. I don't think it's really necessary for me to continue to carry on today in terms of all the effects of retitrutide and the effects of the hormone secreting, growth hormone secreting hormones. I will just leave it at this. When it comes to the holidays and it comes to treat days, what you have to understand is you make a decision to use these peptides as an optimizer or as a performance enhancer, however you want to phrase it. It's your body and what you do with it is up to you. I just don't see the logic in working so hard to get in such great shape to become so meta metabolically optimally healthy and then to throw it away because of social pressures or social fears of missing out. I personally think that you're missing out by being strong and having the, the willpower and the discipline to just say like, okay, you know, it's one thing if I have a sliver of this, it's another thing if I have two pieces of cake and I stuff myself with turkey because this is the way it is. Now, if you went for a five mile run earlier that day and you're gonna time it in the, you know, one and a half hour window to be able to refeed and refuel, that's different. And I think you'll physically see the difference, physically feel the difference, and certainly feel a lot better in terms of not having the afterburn or after effect. That's what we call the metabolic window or the glycolytic window, eating the additional food and you know refeeding uh, extra calories with some very intense physical activity. Cross energy workout, both aerobic and anaerobic activity style workouts, are very effective at putting you in the uh, are putting you in a, a deficit to where it would be very appropriate to refeed quite heavy, but of course, don't just get in the um, traditional sort of well it's the holidays I haven't worked out hard for two days and then today I didn't do anything and now I'm sitting around and we're gonna watch some TV and I'm gonna put away you know three thousand or five thousand calories in a few hours. That's just the recipe for the cycle of, of failure and the uh, non-sustainability, non-longevity model that leads to all these rebounds, relapses, failures, and I tried and it didn't work. And that's you know pretty much the overbearing message. I think that you know we're in a new age where these peptides are available. The knowledge is there. People can make the choice to utilize them at their own risk and reap usually, usually a lot of the benefit. And I just don't see how it's worth it in any capacity to um, potentially cross a barrier that jeopardizes all that hard work you put in. So guys, enjoy the holiday. Please reach out for anything. And until next time, it's Dr. Perlman.